Welcome students to our today's lecture. We are looking at topic 1, introduction to computers. Specifically, we are going to look at the classification of computers. Let's get started. So, computers can be classified according to the following factors. Physical size and processing power. Purpose for which they are designed. Functionality and as well as uh, fu uh, th these functionalities include the method and uh, what is called uh, the mode of operation. Now, by looking at uh, according to physical size or processing power, we have three main types of computers. These are the supercomputers, we have the mainframe computers, we have the mini computers, microcomputers, and then we have the portable computers, which includes the laptop, notebooks, and palm tops. Let's look at the next session. We are starting by looking at the supercomputers. Now, What are these supercomputers? Supercomputers are the fastest, largest, most expensive and powerful computers available. They excel in processing speed, capable of performing complex calculations in a fraction of a second. Most supercomputers utilize uh, multiple processors dividing these tasks among them for faster execution all controlled by a central processor which we say is a CPU. Special cooling systems including the submerging CPU in liquid fluorocarbon are required to manage the high heat that is being generated since they do things at a faster rate. Supercomputers are large heavy and housed in a specialized rooms with the controlled environmental condi conditions. So the rooms must be well ventilated. They are operated by computer specialists and can accommodate over 500 users simultaneously. Supercomputers are predominantly used for complex scientific applications that involve extensive calculations and also require significant computational powers. Now, examples of these uh, of areas where these supercomputers are applicable. In most of the examination, you might be asked, apart from looking at all the characteristics that we have looked at, you will also be asked to state areas where these supercomputers are being apl applied. So one of them is weather forecasting. And uh, I know that uh, most of you have visited weather um, uh, meteorological centers and you are able to identify so many areas where you've seen the type of computers being used and also other functions. Number two, we have petroleum research, uh, like pipeline areas and so on. We have defense, uh, the, like your headquarter areas and uh, the military defense uh, headquarters. They use these supercomputers to do several tasks, like including even uh, trying to track other areas and enemies areas. We have weapon analysis. We have aerodynamic design and simulation. Both aerodynamic designs and simulations are used in aviation areas like uh, the Kenya aviation uh, areas and localities. So let's move on and look at the next uh, stage. Notable examples. Now, what are some of the examples of these supercomputers? One of them is the Cray 3 TD3 
or T3D and NEC 500. Now let's look at the mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are less powerful and less expensive compared to supercomputers. They are large in size but smaller than supercomputers. Mainframes have high capacity capacities for main storage and backing storage they possess they possess or they process a high processing speed allowing for quick processing of large amounts of data mainframes can support a large number of peripherals and accommodate between 5 to 300 terminals they are capable of handling hundreds of users simultaneously with examples of up to three uh, up to 200 users operating at the same time mainframe computers are general purpose and can handle various types of problems both scientific and commercial mainframes are commonly used in government departments large organizations and companies with extensive information processing needs. Examples of areas where these mainframe computers are used include the banking sectors, hospitals for billing, and payrolls. We also have preparations, communication networks, uh, that includes acting as servers and also the airline reservation systems. Notable examples of these mainframe computers. Sometimes you're being asked to state some of the examples. Number one is IBM 4381, ICL39 series, and CDC Cyber series. Now, let's look at another group called mini computers. These are physically smaller than the mainframes, but can support the same peripheral devices. They, are accommodate, they, they can accommodate multiple users simultaneously with several workstations or terminals connected to a central mini computers for resource sharing. They are easier to manufacture and maintain compared to the mainframes computers. They are cheaper than mainframes but more expensive than the micro computers. They have smaller data handling capacity, less power, and also the lower memory compared to the mainframe mainframes. They are slower in processing compared to mainframe computers. And the next characteristics is that they are commonly used in. Now, these are the fields or the areas where these mini computers are used. Most of them or uh, majority of them we can state as follows that uh, one is scientific laboratories we have the research institutions we have engineering plants we have uh, space industries insurance companies banks for accounting purposes and uh, smaller organizations such as the network server uh, companies now, let's look at uh, examples of these uh, mini computers, if available. So, examples of the mini computers is the PDP-8, built in 1965 by Digital Equipment Corporation in the United States. Now, let's look at another uh, group that is microcomputers. Uh, they are known as personal computers or PCs. They are commonly found in homes, schools, and small offices. For example, the desktops. All those are microcomputers. They are designed for use by one person at a time, like even the laptop. Yeah. Uh, microcomputers have limited peripheral devices support typically one or two devices that's why you always have maybe the usb ports are fewer they are not that much data processing in microcomputers is carried out by the microprocessor 
which is a single chip containing the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit which we have already discussed as parts of the computer systems. Microcomputers are smaller and cheaper than the mini computers utilizing very large scale integrated or what is called the VLSI to incorporate multiple components into a single integrated circuit. They are less powerful than microcomputers and they have smaller internal memories. Let's look at uh, microcomputers uh, are used in several fields of our today's work and one of them is training and learning institutions like schools and other areas, trainings like here at IBS, small business enterprises and communication centers as terminals. Also, the most popular or why or reasons why these microcomputers are most popular. Number one, they are af affordability. They are very affordable. They are not that much expensive compared to mainframes or supercomputers. High processing speeds, compact sizes, because they are, you can be able to carry them uh, so easily. They are not that much heavier. Energy efficiency and improved reliability compared to other mainframe computers. Examples of these microcomputers include IBM PCs, Apple Mac, Mac, Macintosh, uh, Dells, the Compaq, and others. Let's look at the smaller part of it now, the laptops and notebooks. Remember these were the personal computers. Now a laptop is a PC, sufficiently small and light such that a user can use it comfortably on his laps and that's why they were called laptops. Mostly you put them on the laps of your legs. So it is designed to be used by placing it on the lap. They have limited storage capacities. That's why mostly you have it is 250 GB or 500 GB, depending on now the hard disk size. Nowadays we have the ones that are called US, uh, SSDs. Uh, they have advanced power management capabilities. They consume less power since laptops can operate on rechargeable batteries. Not the following that. The smaller computers like laptops tend to be more expensive than the desktops. Uh, why? Because of the following reasons. Number one is that the technology of producing smaller devices is expensive. Number two, they are convenient because they are portable. And number three, they have advanced power management capabilities they, because they consume less power. And since the laptops can operate on rechargeable bases. So, uh, other characteristics that you might think about about these laptops is that we've said that laptops are very small in size and they are portable because they are small in size they can fit inside their briefcases or your small bags a laptop uh, computer operates mainly on electricity or by rechargeable batteries they are normally they normally have inbuilt disk drives and flat screens or what are called liquid crystal uh, displays. They can only support a limited number of peripheral devices and lastly they have limited storage capacity. Those are the characteristics of the laptops. Now let's look at what are called palm tops. The palm tops are small enough to fit in, in the pocket and they can, they can be held in the palm when being used. A palm is the part of your arm here. You can be able to carry it or even put it within this area. Uh, they are being used to have limited storage capacity. Palm tops are mainly used as personal organizers with some minimal programs, for example, calculations, word processing, spreadsheets, and emails. 
Examples of these palm tops are personal digital assistants, what are called the PDAs. Now, we also have what are called desktop computers. This is the name given to any computer designed to be used when placed on a desktop in an office environment. They are not portable. Mostly they are heavier a bit, you know. You cannot be able to carry it on the way like a laptop. Now, what are examples of desktop computers? One is home computers. This is a low-cost microcomputer of limited capability designed for domestic use. Mostly, you leave them at home. It has programs that are used typically for computer games or controlling family finances. Maybe you just use it at home. Personal computers. This is a microcomputer designed for independent use by an individual at work. Uh, or in the home mainly for business purposes it can support only one user at a time they are mostly used in offices schools business premises and at home for various applications like computer literacy games database management accounting functionalities like yours maybe you have some work you want to carry it at home to do and complete that's what you do word processing, and also telecommunication. They can be connected to mini or mainframe computers so as to enable the user access the, uh, the facilities offered by the larger machines. Now, workstations. A workstation, mostly we say that is usually a desktop computer with all the facilities but interlinked to a, ne a network. Now, if you have your desktop computer with all the components in it, or the all complete system unit, and then they are interlinked with the network, then we call it to be a workstation. Typically, workstation works in a similar way to a personal computer. However, mostly it's more advanced than a typical PC in the following ways. So what are the different ways that differentiate the, the two? It is larger and more powerful than a PC, e.g. a workstation that uses 32-bit microprocessors, while PCs that use 16-bit microprocessors. Number two, it has inbuilt capabilities for its interconnection and operation with other computers. For example, it's fully connected to a computer network as any other computer on the network in its own right. It has high resolution graphics, right? So you'll find that now the pictures and videos are more clear than other desktop computers. It has a multitasking operating systems. It is able to run multiple applications at the same time. Now, we also have what is called an embedded computer. This is a computer that is within another device or system, but it's not accessed directly. For example, the IoT systems, you know, uh, yeah, they are embedded computers operating within petrol pumps. We have watches, we have cameras, and the video recorders. Now, the second classification that we talked about was classification according to purpose. Now, in this category, digital computers can be classified further according to this. Uh, category and that includes general purpose, special purpose and dedicated computers. What are these general purpose computers? These are computers that are designed to perform a wide variety of tasks. They use specifically written instructions or programs to carry out the desired processing tasks. Examples a single computer can be used to process documents, perform calculations, process the payroll, simulate the loading on the bridge, for example, the way bridge areas, process insurance policies, and also play games, and among other areas. The programs that are used in general purpose computers mostly are exchangeable. Why? This means that to perform a particular task, the appropriate set of instructions 
or programs required to perform that particular task are loaded into the computer memory. For example, if you want to play a game, the appropriate program for a game like the Solitaire is the one that you'll be able to log, to load into the computer's memory and the computer is now instructed to execute the instructions which make up that ga the game. Examples of these general purpose computers is the mainframes, mini computers, microcomputers, laptops that are used in most offices and schools because they are used for general purpose. Now, let's look at now the review questions that we have. Now, some review questions that I have here is that give four characteristics of first generation computers, write the following abbreviations in full, like ENIAC, VLCs, VLSI, and ICIs what is artificial intelligence and all that we shall look at them. I would like us to look at factors that determine the type of computers. We have uh, what are some of the factors that determine the type of computers. Type of the processor. We look at computer, microcomputers use single chip microprocessors while larger computers utilize multi-pore high-speed components for advanced computational capabilities. Processing speed, like the clock speed of the computer, determines its processing speed. Larger computers have more instructions. Amount of main memory, such as the RAM. Then we have uh, storage capacity of the hard disk drives. We have the cost of the computer. The most of the computer is directly related to its size and capabilities. Microcomputers are generally less expensive than the larger computers. We look at the speed of the output devices. Microcomputers have slower output speed compared to other uh, mini computers which works faster number of users microcomputers support a limited number of users while larger computers can accommodate hundreds of users simultaneously additional factors that you can talk about are the purpose different types of computers are designed for specific purposes such as personal computing gaming scientific research business tasks or supercomputers we have processing power. High performance tasks require supercomputers or high-end workstations. We also have factors like memory and storage requirements, which are intensive systems that need computers with ample RAM and larger storage capacities. We also talk about mobility and portability. Laptops or tablets like smartphones offer mobility and portability for on the or on the go computing systems uh, we also have specialized hardware or software requirements such as certain industries or tasks that require specific hardware or software support such as graphic cards for graphic design especially the video and gaming type of computers you also talk about budget what is your budget maybe you have less cash so you go for what you can be able to afford. Financial constraints impact on the choice of the computers. Scalability and expandability. Consideration for future growth uh, and expansion influence the selection of the computers that you want. You want. User preferences. Individuals mostly have prefer their personal preferences. Others prefer uh, palm tops. Others prefer laptops. Others prefer desktops and so on. Uh, depending on the comfort and familiarities with the operating system that they have. Some people don't like uh, computers that run Mac OS and others like the one that run Unix or Linux. So you buy based on the preferences that you have. 
briefly explain five factors that can be used to determine the type of the computers and those are the ones that we have stated there discuss the sig significance of processing power and memory requirements in determining the type of computer for specific tasks provide examples supporting your answer this is the second question then we have explain how user preferences and purposes of the computer influences the choice of the computer type illustrate your answer with relevant examples the fourth question that i can talk about is discuss the factors that should be considered when selecting a computer based on mobility and portability requirements explain the advantages and disadvantages of different types of computers in relation to mobility and portability some of the feedbacks or answers that i've given to you is for example for the first question briefly explain five factors that can be used to determine the type of the uh, computer one is the type of processor which we have already explained processing speed amount of main memory we've talked about storage capacity of the hard disk drive we've talked about the cost uh, other factors are now the second question is discuss the significance of processing power and memory requirements in determining the type of computer for specific tasks and here i will ask you to give me examples that support your answer this is how you can be able to answer number one you talk you can talk about processing power then you explain a bit and give an example that is high performance tasks such as simulations and scientific research require computers with powerful processors to handle complex calculations and data processing examples you can talk about weather forecasting molecular modeling and artificial intelligence research you can talk about memory requirements that is memory intensive tasks such as video editing or visualization demand computers with ample ram to handle uh, large data sets and run resource intensive applica applications other examples include 3d rendering virtual machine environments and also the database management systems the third question was explain how user preferences and the purpose of the computer influence the choice of the computer type and i've said that illustrate your answer with relevant examples one of the answer you can give is user preferences you can talk about that individual preferences for operating systems such as windows mac os linux or form factors such as desktop laptop tablet can guide the choice of your compu computer examples like uh, a graphic designer may prefer mac computers for its intuitive design software and seamless integration with creative art tools such as Adobe XD, Figma, Balsamic, and so on. Purpose of the computers. You can talk about different types of computers are designed for specific purposes, such as personal computing, gaming, scientific research, or business ta tasks. Examples, we can talk about the gaming enthusiast would choose a high performance gaming computer most of the gaming computers requires computers that have high graphics if you just use just a computer that has less graphics mostly to control those plays becomes uh, difficult or moving players from one end to another or moving even if it is uh, maybe chess moving one one button from one end to another becomes hard so those are the key one that you can be able to talk about but you can be able also to expand your thinking and also talk about more things discuss the factors that should be considered when selecting a computer based on mobility we are talking about how portable it will be or to move from one end to another now you need to look at the other the factors than the ones that suit to this then explain the advantages and advantages of different types of computers in relation to mobility and portabi portability one of the factors for mobility and portability is weight size battery life and connectivity options are crucial you look at the weight of this thing right if it is a phone how heavy is it if it's a laptop how heavy is it 
battery life mostly you go and buy an expensive phone because you uh, you know that the battery lasts longer at least you can use it for a day before you charge it again connectivity some com some phones or even computers take longer time for them to connect to the internet so such kind of things are the ones that you have to consider examples you can talk about business travelers may prioritize the lightweight laptops with long battery life for productivity on the go because they travel long and they need to do their work while on tra on transit advantages and disadvantages we can, we can talk about the laptops advantages is they are portable they are battery powered but versatility for various tasks because they can do several work without getting tired disadvantages we talk about relatively larger and heavier compared to tablets or smartphones some laptops are very heavy like toshiba and all others those old ones not the current versions like uh, the 11th generation or 7th generation these ones are lighter when you get those others like compact one you know they are very heavy tablets talk about advantages like highly portable uh, they are touch interfaces they are long battery life suitable for content consumption and casual tasks disadvantages we talk about limited processing power and also software compatibility they also have lack of physical keyboard sometimes so unless now you use now the other uh, clipped keyboards the ones that you can now buy outside then be able to touch them then you talk about the smartphones the one everybody here uses the smartphone uh, and uh, one of the advantages we talk about ultimate portability the second one is they are always connected uh, that because they can connect to Bluetooth Wi-Fi and so on uh, they are always a diverse app ecosystem you can be able to download any app either in a app store or through Google Play Store disadvantages we talk about they have small screen size not like laptops so sometimes you might not be enjoying the video well limited processing power for complex tasks and then now this is what you need to consider when considering these factors you need to determine the most suitable computer based on the on your mo mobility and portability requirements so thank you and that makes the end of our lecture five um, Dr. Joel Barasa, you can email me at info EMCI Habtech Limited or LTD at gmail.com. So we also deal with corporate trainings and on-call IT support and other areas. We have several activities as explained and shown here. So thank you and let's get connected to the next uh, lecture and class. So thank you. Goodbye.